Most scammers prefer you not know their name. But for some, fame is all part of the hustle. But it's not just men who can pull off a good scam. Keep hold of your valuables as famous female scammers gets deep and fried. Deep of the fried. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. Let me tell you something. Maybe you can call me a misogynist. You can call me a sexist. You can call me what you will. Mm. Okay, I do. But I do. Okay. But I do believe that to be a true scammer takes a set of fucking balls. It takes a set of fucking balls. Think so? Mm. It takes a big mm. man brain and a big set of man balls. Oh, man. They all must have way bigger balls than you because they made way more money with their scams. I don't think even so, Scotty. Of, I don't think that, I don't even believe that. I don't a, believe it. I don't believe you have to convince me, Scotty. You, you disgust me. You have to prove nothing. it to me, Scotty. You disgust me. Women don't have the capacity to scam. They rely on that stupidity, I'm assuming, to scam you. Do you know who this is, TJ? Um, No. Of course you don't. Paul, do you know who this is? Which already this, proves your fucking premise wrong because this is not a famous person. Huge, this, uh, very famous actress in China. Yeah, this is Moon Seung Kim, <laughs> a uh, famous, oh, Paul. iconic Korean actress. Paul did a racism. What did I do? Uh, this is Fawn Bing Bing, who is uh, one Wait of the... Wait a minute, uh, what? You said her name Fawn, was Bing Bing, Bing Bing and I did a racism? That's her name, Paul. Fawn Bing Bing. Fawn Bing Bing. That fun is her Bing name. Bing. Fawn. That's a fun name. I wish my last one of name China's was Bing Bing. Biggest stars. Uh, yeah. So one of the China, the Chinese film industry's biggest stars and highest paid actresses vanished from the public eye for a total of three months in 2018. The entire world questioned her whereabouts. Uh, this actually did get coverage in the, the U.S. press. I kind of remember this. Yeah. Bing Bing's. 69, oh, excuse me, 62.9 million Weibo followers together with the entire Chinese film industry went into a panic mode when she stopped making public appearances and posting on social media. So, I mean, she's a huge influencer. She's got, at the time... Wait, this is like if fucking Brad Pitt or somebody just, like, vanishes. The no one knows The media compared it to, like, you know, like, Jennifer Lawrence or something. Right. Just gone. Like, yeah, like, any, go? any big star just totally disappears from the public eye. It's, of course, yeah. like, people are going to be like, what the fuck is going on? Of course, rumors swirled, and the companies she had become an ambassador for, including Swiss, Montblanc, and Chopard, began to drop her. Like, if you're not going to be in public, you know, value to us. Uh, but of course, according to Vanity Fair, it was soon discovered the actress, who is best known for her appearances in both Iron Man and X-Men franchises, had been charged with tax evasion. Oops. That's a big deal in China. It's not the same as tax evasion here. Until I think it was like 2011, it was punishable by death. Let's just put it that way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, China doesn't fuck around with tax evasion. Uh, the publication reports that Bing Bing had fraudulently declared her salary for the upcoming film Cell Phone 2 as $1.5 million, when her actual correct contract uh, read $7.8 million. Ooh, whoops. Uh, maybe a slight discrepancy there of a few million dollars. A little you know, tax no dodge deal. there. Yeah, nice little tax. Ooh, the tax. I just dodged that. I don't know. I feel like if they're gonna put you to death for that, you might want to just claim the fuck, <laughs> the few extra million. I don't. Know. Uh, following uh, the launch of an investigation, Chinese censors were said to have banned all online stories, online stories about the actress, taxes, and films, which is the power in China. Uh, in October, the star reappeared before the South China Morning Post and reported she had been detained by Chinese secret police and held under surveillance without access to lawyers or family members in the, sh in the suburb of Zhengzhou. Uh, Bing Bing then uh, issued an apology on social media before authorities had reportedly discovered the actress had done the same with her salary for Airstrike, another film. I mean, yeah, I mean, if she did it once. I mean, yeah. Well, this was a common practice in the Chinese film industry. It was like, okay, we can save you some money on taxes because you're going to say, oh, for this role, you paid me $1.2 million. You're actually going to pay me $7 million. So, of course, then when you say, if they go audit you, it's like, yeah, I only made this much. So, basically, it's a, it's a, it's a Chinese tax scam. And the state funds a lot of this stuff, so the state's in on it. It was just kind of like, like, honestly, we'll, we'll, we'll get to more of the repercussions. Kind of reminds me of Uva Bowl's movie making thing. 
Oh, the Maybe German the, tax credit yeah, yeah, yeah. scam he ran. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. Yeah, get investors. Okay, we've got investors into Germany. All right, now I get a bunch of money to make my schlocky films. What a brilliant man. Uh, this is uh, a CBS report about this whole incident here. Sman actress Vaughn Bingbing is back in the public eye after mysteriously disappearing three months ago. The superstar from China resurfaced on social media yesterday after Chinese, Chinese government officials publicly accused her of tax evasion. Now, she is best known here in America for her role in X-Men Days of Future Past. Vladimir Duty of our streaming network. I saw that movie and I do not remember yeah, her. At I all. do not remember her in the film either. I don't remember her to this I was even really the tiniest like, degree. Trying well, to she come was put up in for Chinese markets. Or a memory of that character, and I just I don't remember. Yeah, her. I have no. She was put fun. in for the Chinese market. Gotcha. Network CBSN is here with what the actress is now telling her supporters. Vlad can't wait to hear. Good morning. What is this? What a fucking shit eating grin on this dude's face. He's just like. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good morning. In the U.S., this would have been like Julia Roberts or Jennifer Lawrence suddenly vanishing from public view. But after months of speculation, China's most famous actress has finally reappeared with facing millions of dollars in tax fines. She's a fixture on the red carpet. The face of many international luxury brands and one of China's most recognizable and highest paid actresses. And three months ago, she simply disappeared. But on Wednesday, China's official news agency announced that 37-year-old Fan Bingbing had been charged with tax evasion and has been ordered to pay nearly $130 million in overdue taxes and fines. <laughs> Spoiler alert. She didn't pay anywhere near that. Oh, <laughs> $130 million. Fuck me. Fines. In her first it's better than the death sentence, though. Social media posts in nearly four months, Fawn apologized to the public, writing, I feel shamed and guilty for what I have done, adding she would, quote, try my best to overcome all difficulties and raise funds to pay back taxes and fines. Dude, I, a shockwave. I, I think it's clear what happened here. She went to a re-education camp, dude. Yeah. That's why she disappeared for three months. She spent three months in a re-education camp. And now Ooh, she's like just China. a piece of living propaganda for why you don't fuck over the Chinese government. Oh, dude, she the message she put out was basically just clearly written for her. It was just like, this is the statement you will say. Yeah, like <laughs> I failed like my country and my people kind of shit. Like I have betrayed every yeah. single person in this country by what I did. Yeah, essentially that's what she I am put human out. garbage and I will spend the rest of my life atoning for the sins that I have committed. When she disappeared. Robert Kane is a producer who writes about China's film industry. The government is sending a very strong message to everyone that no one is above this. We didn't deal with celebrities before. We've never taken them into a custody like this. But now, you know, the rules are different. And so watch out. Damn. Some Chinese actors. Those may hater shades, though. Can I ask uh, Bing Bing where she got those hater shades at? Because I would like to purchase myself a pair of those hater shades, please. I doubt you could afford it. <laughs> I well, doubt any of my us friend Beauregard that. might be able to pick up the tag. Oh, well, Beauregard. Okay, well, that's, I mean, a, yeah, that's famous, a horse of a different color. Famous rapper Beauregard. I mean, Beauregard, sure. you know, we can put him in touch with the uh, designer, but I mean, they have what are called yin yang contracts for each film, where one contract shows an actor's real earnings, while another contract lists a lower figure. That lower figure is then reported to tax officials. This is, I mean, this has always been Hollywood accounting, so the Chinese movie industry is probably just taking its cues from what the American movie industry does, which is right. like, you know, I mean, like it's the, the, the accounting practices of Hollywood are so fucking shady. It's incredible. Like you cannot, you literally cannot trust um, any figure that's fucking I've forward read, facing. I've read explanations about it and it'll make your head spin. Yeah. I mean like any account, I mean like it's designed to, it's supposed to be so that no one can really figure out what the fuck is going on. I mean, other than the, the accountant. Yeah. Other than people who are like forensic accountants. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is obviously just the Chinese movie industry trying to do the same thing. And the Chinese government's like, no, we're not having that here. Fuck you. You're going to pay your fucking taxes. Allowing the actor to evade taxes. Cool. Last year, Forbes reported Fawn was worth an estimated $43 million. In 2016, she ranked as the fifth highest paid actress in the world, right behind Jennifer Aniston. 
This summer, China's government imposed a cap on actors' pay at 70 percent of the total pay to all the actors in a film. Celebrities like Jackie Chan and film studios are required by the Chinese government to promote core socialist values. Despite Fan's well-documented charity work, Kane says it's unclear whether the actress will bounce back. It may well be that her career is over as an international star, but it's hard to say. Sometimes people just disappear for good in China. <laughs> Comforting. Yes, Sometimes damn. people just vanish forever. You never yeah, know. You never she, know in China. At least she popped back up, you know. Sometimes people don't. <laughs> Sometimes people just never reemerge. You uh, know I would say that while they, the Chinese government is pretty strict, this is probably a, a viewed as a very lenient sentence for her. Dude, she honest. could escape and claim asylum over here and say that she was the victim of like torture and extortion in China and become yeah, a and huge then you could fucking just, movie star in America, but, dude. But here's here's the thing, guys. And like then she just has to extol our capitalist values. It, it's and it's, all, gonna be it's fine. all for a show, anyways, because of course, as we found out, Bing Bing was later ordered to pay 131 million in back taxes and penalties, including 70 million from her own pocket, which according to Vanity Fair, she ended up only forking out about two million dollars. So uh, she sold a bunch of property and other deals, and so she did, wasn't really hurt as bad as, you know, and, and I think that was just the intention of it was just to make a headline. Well, this was obvious. Right. Just, this was the Chinese government letting them know, like, hey, we ain't fucking looking the other way on this. Yeah, you better report your real earnings or you can end up in the same uh, situation. Uh, let's see. Uh, the star's demise shook many within the film industry. As Vanity, as Vanity Fair reports, it was common for stars to falsify their contracts in order to avoid paying taxes. So sure. they're sending a message. Uh, she hasn't really done much since then. Uh, while she's currently laying low, the publication has suggested the possible comeback of Bing Bing as her production company remains in business. Uh, I looked into it. She hasn't done shit since then. Yeah, she's been laying low. As far as I could tell. It's crazy that tax evasion is that big of a deal. Damn. I mean, it's a big deal here, too. Well, but like, they were just sending a message you know, to the entire film industry. Wesley Snipes or something. You know, he he was a tax evader, and you know, it's not like no one really. It's big in Hollywood it's, because it's not scam. I mean, like no one considers it much of a scandal. It's just like, oh, he's in trouble, or like Willie Nelson, he got he fucking had a huge tax issues. Uh, Nicholas Cage plagued by tax fucking issues. Uh, um, you know, plenty. also they made they made millions and never paid a single fucking dollar. So how's this bitch even a scammer, Scotty? So fucking your first thing has not dissuaded me from my initial. Th she just, basically she's a scammer because she did the standard contract that every fucking actor did in China, but Goal she just posts. happened to be the one that got pinched. Goal posts. Goal she's posts. She's a famous. How did you, wait? It's Goal a famous. Posts. How did she did? How did she even scam? What was her scam? Goal posts. She's a, tax evasion. What are you talking about? She committed TJ massive tax fraud like and tax evasion. evasion. Is not a scam you, now. You just said that was standard for Chinese movie contracts. She didn't even come up with that shit. Her fucking agent or publicist or something. Damn did. man, stop She's those the one that got pinched for it, TJ. Mm. This is sad, TJ. You're a sad guy. Uh, wait, you're gonna sit here in my fucking presence and besmirch Sylvia Brown? You have any idea how many people she's helped, Scotty? Um, herself zero, <laughs> zero actually because she looks like she's in horrible shape so she's, she, she wow, didn't okay. even help herself yeah she long well, dead she helped now, herself but... financially <laughs> all right oh Sylvia Brown uh, the psychic who basically profited off of grieving families terrible fucking human the being. psychic who helped grieving families oh yeah that's I guess that's one way to look by at it by giving them closure Scotty when it comes to con men or women, few are more predatory than the self-proclaimed psychic named Sylvia Brown, dubbed America's most controversial psychic. <laughs> she made her fortune selling false soap to the parents of missing children. What a great human being. False hope? Wait, why is it false? Uh, we'll find out in a moment. Too, I right? don't think it is false, Scotty. I think that she's a real psychic and she was helping people out. If you want to fucking kayfabe and simp for Sylvia Brown, be my guess. Okay. Uh, born Sylvia Shoemaker. That's kind of the direction I was going, yeah. No, I, I figured. On October 19th, 1936, in Kansas, Missouri, uh -huh. Brown claimed that her psychic be abilities began when she was a toddler. Mm. And in 1974, she founded the Nirvana Foundation for Psychic Research. Wow, cool. Damn, A cool. few years later. Yeah, the Nirvana. Yeah, so she's doing some psychic research. Woo! I don't know how you do psychic research, but I guess that's what she was doing. Hey. You listen to Nirvana and you smoke weed, man. And you can like read Kurt's mind from beyond <laughs> the grave. 
That sounds more legitimate than any organization <laughs> she was a part of. Uh, a few years later, she opened the Society of Nova Spiritus, where she trained ministers to help spread her, her ideas about God to her uh, their followers. Uh, Brown also taught hypnosis to her, her eponymous training center. That's nice of her. Uh, during the late 1980s, there's a little side about Sylvia. Uh, the FBI and local authorities began invest investigating Brown and her businesses over several bank loans that caused sustained losses to banks. Oh, that's interesting. Those loans didn't really pan out to her. In 1992, Brown and her then husband, uh, <laughs> then husband, of course, uh, Kenzel Dalzen, Dalzell, uh, were indicted on several charges of investment fraud and grand theft. The Superior Court of Santa Clara Co County, California, found that Brown and her husband had sold securities in a gold mining venture under false pretenses. Oh, what she are you going to gonna do, honey? <laughs> Business is complicated, okay? Listen, not guilty. Not guilty, not guilty. Literally like a fucking goddamn, we, we all love the show Deadwood, like a Deadwood scam. <laughs> I'm like, this gold mine's going to pay big. Watch the I swinging watch, honey, and repeat after me. Sylvia Brown is not guilty. <laughs> Sylvia Brown. Brown is not guilty. Smokes too many cigarettes. I'm sorry. I mean, he's not guilty. I may not be psychic, but I, I never do. smoked a cigarette in my life. Of course. I, I just kid you, Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> in at least one instance, the, they, they told a couple that their $20,000 investment was to be used for immediate operating costs. Instead, the money was transferred to an account for their Nirvana Foundation for Psychic Research. Yeah. Immediate I mean, operating costs at the Nirvana Psychic yeah, yes. Research Center. Wait, What's well, the... wait. Listen, they had to fucking use their psychic powers to suss out where the gold is. Mm. And that required $20,000. <laughs> Where's the gold? Where's the gold? Uh, it's in legit. my bank account. Uh, of course, as scammers do. Brown pleaded no contest to securities fraud and was indicted on grand larceny in Santa Clara County on May 26, 1992. Uh, the couple each received one year probation. In addition, Brown was sentenced to 200 hours of community service. So, Sylvia. No, what? Whoa, that was too harsh, Scotty. Okay, okay, okay. That was too harsh. Put your, put your hand here, Scotty. All right. Now we need to punish Sylvia. All right. All right. All right. Don't. Oh, don't. No. No. Maybe. Hold up. Hold. All right. Uh, uh, ah! Sorry. Uh, sorry. Dare you strike me, you buffoon? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, don't fucking. Do Ow. Ow. Why would you me. do such a thing to me? It's so harsh. <laughs> Kick your ass. God, how, how could they even do that to Sylvia Brown? It's so cruel. So, dude, you guys would love this. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, and shit, I'd probably do it if I could too. Brown raked in money by charging customers $700 to $850 for 20 to 30 minutes. It just depends. Uh, <laughs> on the, per the source you asked to ask her questions about their lives over the telephone for about a half an hour. It, it ranged from 20 to 30 minutes. She claimed this is almost like a Scientology thing here. She claimed she could look centuries into the past and talk to the dead and alleged their psychic abilities had helped the FBI to solve many crimes. Yeah. For instance, she helped the FBI solve the case of who was, uh, <laughs> Hustling people out of money under the yeah. false pretense of it going to some gold mining yeah. operation. Look, we're, we got a gold mine. We need twenty thousand. We're gonna get started. There's gold in those hills. I swear. <laughs> There's gold up in them There's there, hills, Sonny Jim. Dude, you gotta feel bad gold. for the people, but like that's like the oldest fucking trick. In I the just want to say, by point. the way, uh, I think Kenzil Dalzell Brown was the real brains behind the operation, being the man of and all. You're probably right. So this is really what repelled Sylvia Brown to the American zeitgeist. Uh, she shot the fame after she landed a regular guest spot on the Montel Williams show. <laughs> Fuck you, Montel, you piece of yeah, shit. Yeah, Montel's a total God enabler. bless you, over. Montel Williams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I'm, yes, I'm here to tell you the psychic reading. Yeah, Where yeah, Where she yeah. gave parents whose children had gone missing premonitions or information on their whereabouts. Sometimes she would tell the parents that their child was dead. Okay, so I'm seeing your child. Oh, I'm sorry they're dead. Dead. They're fucking dead. Your child's dead. I'm so sorry, so honey. Your child is dead. <laughs> Face down in a fucking ditch. What uh, you gonna what, do? Yeah, it's so tragic. $200 uh, in non-consecutive <laughs> 20s, please, Montel. I've done my work. 
One of her most notorious readings was of Opal Joe Jennings, a six-year-old girl who was kidnapped by a stranger from her grandparents' Texas yard in 1999. She's not dead, the scam artist told Jennings' grandparents on Montel. But what bothers me, now I've never heard of this before, but she was taken and put into some kind of slavery thing and taken into Japan. The place is Kukuro. Uh, so she was taken and put on some kind of boat or a plane and taken into slavery. Now, keep in mind, these are people who are desperate yeah. to have any information. Please, you have any information little, about that? About yes, this little child, where this Japan. little child, this little girl went. And they, she has the gall to go on a show. She's in Kokoro, Japan. She's a white a slave, slave in Japan. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with Sylvia Brown? Captured oh, well, what do you mean? by was... white slavers and taken to Kukuro, Japan. <laughs> Sleep well tonight, family of this yeah. little girl that disappeared. <laughs> Unfortunately for Brown and, of course, the family, I guess, because, I mean, I, I, I think they would hold out some hope they would have seen her alive. Brown's reading proof false when Jennings' body was found buried somewhere in Fort Worth, Texas. They brought her just can- back from Kokoro after <laughs> they were done using her for slavery when she died of it. They brought her back from Kokoro and put her bones back near where she was raised. Those okay, monsters. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Sylvia, pathologist concluded <laughs> the girl had been killed and buried, uh, buried the same day that she was kidnapped. Those so. monsters killed her took her to Kukuro and sold her corpse into white slavery and then buried it again to make it look like somebody nearby killed her. Yeah, oh, it's interesting. God, these filthy Kukuro white slavers. Uh, Kukuro actually... Um, uh, Kokomo, town Japan. Aruba, Jamaica, yeah. Kukuro, who I want to yeah. take you. Uh, yeah. uh, here you go. Yeah, so, but, no, the city of Kukuro. This that's is the it, Kukuro right there. That's where she Haka is. Building. Uh, that's in Osaka. That's not Kukuro. Okay, but we're uh, in Kukuro, Japan. Yeah, right? so Japan. It, it appears that that town actually doesn't exist. That's what I <laughs> meant is Teppanyaki Kokoro. Oh, the, the, they, took, they took the girl to Teppanyaki. Oh, I see. I meant Kokomo, not Kukuro. I meant that place the Beach Boys sing about. Apparently, Sylvia didn't count on the internet proving her dumbass scams to be a. You know, a lot wrong. of these little small towns in Japan not even on the map, though, Scotty. That's oh, true. It's an ancient Japanese village Hold that on, no I, one knows. I see her in the woods with a, a single hut village occupied by three <laughs> villages, a very small clan of ancient Japanese warriors. So an exhaustive examination of Brown's 115 public predictions about missing children concluded that 25 are wrong. And the other 90 remained unsolved. Hey, those 90 could all be true. Uh, yeah, sure. Right, you know, <laughs> hey, who's got it? Wait, let me ask you this. Is it possible? Who's yes. got Is a it perfect, likely? No. Who's got a perfect track record, Scotty? Me. Does anyone have a perfect track record? Other than Sylvia uh, Brown, nobody. No one. Yeah, nobody. No one, huh? Sure. All right. This is just saying she's a fraud. So which, fuck Anderson Cooper. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Let's go about there. He wasn't black. He was more a Hispanic. Wow, you're... His, I thought you were just putting on like a totally bullshit Hispanic. voice for her, but uh, no, no, she actually I does wasn't, sound like that. TJ, okay. I've was, heard Sylvia real. Brown many times. This yeah, is actually yeah, <laughs> TJ. Remember the Dots Diner commercial voice? That's like Sylvia yeah. Brown's actual Looking. voice. Um, had uh, <laughs> real long dark hair, and strange enough, Hispanic, but he had dreadlocks. Yeah, then dreadlocks. Sylvia Brown confirmed honey. their worst fears. Is he still with us? <laughs> She's dead. Da, 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 da. Thankfully, Sean Hornbeck was found last week alive <laughs> and well. His alleged abductor. No. This, listen. This woman <laughs> mispronounced her name as Hornfleck. If you look into it, you'll actually see that there is a Sam Hornfleck that is still missing. And I'm sorry, I can't control people's mispronunciations of their own last name. I did not oh know that God. it was Seth Hornbeck. <laughs> That was missing. Had Tell I, me, did you just watch My Cousin Vinny? <laughs> who? Jerry Callow? <laughs> He's dead. Yeah. Devlin is not Hispanic, and he didn't have dreadlocks at the time of the abduction. Shocking. But she was terribly wrong about the most important detail of all. Hearing that. 
Uh, very interesting fucking that Anderson Cooper would say he didn't have dreadlocks at the time of the abduction. So does that mean he has had dreadlocks in the past? How That's would right. you know I that? saw the dreadlocks and then he cut them off when he saw me identify him. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I guess that's possible, but completely yep. unlikely and was unreasonable. One of the belief. hardest things we ever had had to hear. The search for Sean was diverted, according to his parents, based on the misinformation Brown had given. Wait. Listen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Some dumbass Wait. listened to Sylvia Brown on the Montel, on Montel show and called off looking for a kid. Look, Sylvia yeah. said he's gone. Listen here, Sylvia Brown done spoke. And, uh, I mean, she's psychic. I mean, we got to listen to people have spoken. Sylvia, I mean, spoken. you know, what are we going to do? Ignore her gift? I mean, I've watched the Montel show. She's right about a lot of things. I seen her. She's listen, unfortunately. When I said on. that that boy was dead, it forced the kidnapper to confront the eventuality of killing the boy and release him. It was all part of my plot. I psychically knew that that's what the kidnapper needed to hear in order to release the boy. <laughs> uh, sure. I saved him. <laughs> I saved him. So saved. fail one debunked. Next. <laughs> Costing the effort valuable man hours. Sean's parents, Craig and Pam Boy, Akers, that's kind of their own fucking Brown fault for listening to, to Sylvia Brown, money. though. But there are also some people she's hurt. For instance, on the Montel Williams show in 1999, Brown shared this information with the grandmother of a missing child named Opal Joe Jennings. She's we turn not this one. dead, but what bothers me. Now, I've never heard of this before, but for some reason, she was taken and put into some kind of slavery thing and taken into Japan. <gasps> Four years later, the little girl's remains were found near Fort Worth, Texas. An autopsy showed she was killed shortly after vanishing. Almost nine years ago, Amanda Berry's mom went on the Montel Williams show where resident psychic Sylvia Brown spoke of Amanda. I don't think I'll ever see her again. Yeah, in heaven on the other side. The WMMS <laughs> morning show in Silver Cleveland Brown. reenacted the transcript. The host read the part of the psychic. I hate this when they're in water. She's not alive, honey. Not alive? Then who's this? I've been kidnapped and <laughs> I've been missing for 10 years. I'm, I'm here. I'm free now. Famous case. I lost my boyfriend tragically. Um, Oops. A few years ago. They never found him. I've had such a hard time since. I see water. The reason why you didn't I find him he was, was in water. He was attacked by squirrels. And find him in water. Squirrels it's like him the girl is missing in Aruba. He, 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 you can't find somebody. Well, it was September 11. There was no. He was a fireman, but. Well, no. no. See, I keep seeing him in water. No, 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 no. no this. No, no, I see him in water. He died on 9 11. I, no, I see water still. Like, he the jumped fucking into goal. the harbor when he saw the plane coming, honey. He <laughs> ran away from the buildings and he jumped headlong into the harbor, honey, is what I'm telling you. I see water. Shut up, bitch. You don't. Hey. Don't fucking correct me. I see water here. Early in the morning on September 11th, as your husband walked to his job in the Twin Towers, he was eating a pepperoni roll that he picked up. (laughs) And he paused for a minute to marvel at how tasty and fresh it was that morning. It slipped and fell and hit his head into the harbor, honey. That's why they never found him. (laughs) I see water and a pepperoni roll. I mean, let me ask you this. Did he ever drink water? Did he ever eat a pepperoni he roll did. while in the water? Oh, well. Is there any way he could have drowned in water <laughs> some way? They never found a piece of him. Nothing. From 9-11. From 9-11. Uh, Montel, they're like trying to coach her. It's like, it's 9-11. 9-11. Sylvia, it's 9-11. Uh, Let's Sylvia, just move on. It's 9-11. It's 9-11. No, 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 no. She said 9-11. Sylvia, so- <laughs> Dude, Sylvia just makes so much money, such a scammer. She doesn't even know what 9 11 is. 9 a what? Who what is that in? about? Who? Listen, the pipe burst in the tower and then the water. He drowned <laughs> Look, in the water. There was a, probably a, <laughs> those buildings have water tanks strategically staged for water pressure purposes. The he probably is, jumped into the tank. The trying wife to like, save himself. 9 11. 9 11. He died. And Sylvia's like, honey, calling 911 is going to do nothing for him now. He drowns. <laughs> He drowned back in September in the water. 
<laughs> Dallas oh is God. in Aruba. He drowned in the water in Aruba. Down like in Jamaica, girls. Aruba. Oh, I want to take the same place that they took that little girl the one time. Kokomo. <laughs> took him to Kokomo. Oh, Off the Florida oh Keys. That's where I want to go. <laughs> Aruba, Jamaica. Yeah, That's where all on the bodies go. Way down in Kokomo. <laughs> well, if they were trying to put the fire out, Montel. It could have been, you know. I, yeah. <laughs> Montel, uh, it could have been. Uh, no, they won't find him, but honey, that's okay, because it doesn't matter if they find him or not. He's still over there. I was 17 years old. Uh, she'll be gone five years, the 21st of this year. Uh, Sylvia, I don't know how she died. Please. If you can, how did she die? She was shot. <laughs> oh my God! Is around her death. She just collapsed in her room. I don't know, but something looks like. Why would you throw out shot? She, she was, was shot. shot. Well, Sylvia, Sylvia is a really lazy con artist, so she doesn't even know the story, which is like the girl collapsed. Like right, like I'm seeing something. Like, see, if she was she a just collapsed collapse, in her room, I don't know. Just be like, yeah, I'm, she I'm, was shot with, with like a nano bullet from a fucking I'm seeing, poison dart or look, something. Look, I'm seeing the brain. I'm seeing the brain light up. I'm thinking there was it was something in her brain that just you know likes have some bullshit. She was so shot late. with a heart attack. <laughs> 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 well, because the promo sets it up where it's like, I don't know what happened, Sylvia, and it's like she, but of course Sylvia interprets as like they don't know where she. Oh, went. she don't even know where her body is. I can just say whatever I want. Yeah, so, but but of but course like, she was, collapsed in a room, Sylvia. Like the dude, he's like, because it looks like a. a they found nothing the on the orch or top. I don't care, nothing. but it looks like something hit her in the chest. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, for yeah, yeah. Yeah. They did drug, you know, they nice do whatever recovery. they do. Just Something hit her in the chest. Maybe it, she thought she was shot. That's what's going on. She it felt like a shot. It felt like a gunshot to her. That's what happened. <laughs> you know what she was doing? She was hanging out with that other lady's husband who was in the water on 9-11. <laughs> Must be. <laughs> and he shot her with a futuristic gun that causes a heart attack. Boom. <laughs> Crime solved. Who knew that <laughs> son of a bitch from 9-11 wasn't a fireman? He was a murdering future <laughs> bastard with a future gun. <laughs> Damn. What a, what a piece of oh, shit. Oh, Sylvia. You're so beautiful. In a 2010 interview, Brown's business manager said that her business has earned her about $3 million a year. Not cool. Bad. Not bad at all. I mean, no. if she's not telling the truth about any of this, why would she? I mean, she's probably not telling the truth about that either. Oh, and she was definitely a tax cheat, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, guys, of course, Brown claimed to have observed heaven and angels. I mean, who, who hasn't? She also professed the ability to speak with a spirit guide named Francine and to receive a wide range of vibrational frequencies. Oh, 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 Give me the information. Oh, oh, I have a vibration. Oh, oh, I, I'm seeing a the frequency. The spirits of oh, the vibrating. Oh it's, oh, it's good. Oh, it's a good vibration. Yeah. I was misquoted. I said I use a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual vibrator. Uh, well, I believe that. Uh, Brown ran her psychic empire until her death in 2013 at the age of 77. Ironically, her own death was another misreading. In 2003, she told Larry King that she would live until she was 88 years old. Eh, she's off. I mean, she's 77, 88. She got the double number right. Whatever. Look, you know, if she'd made another 11, a mere 11 years, her prediction would have been correct. Yeah. My power is too to great for me to be in the public eye anymore, so I uh, changed my name and moved to Kokomo. <laughs> off the Florida Keys, where I solve crimes to this day. I find body a day down here. Oh, she did like a, she pulled like an Elvis. They're she, in she water. Was tired of the fame. <laughs> you, you, ever, know, you ever I heard think... of somebody going missing? Uh, yeah. Like who? I've just heard of people going missing. Like, They're in water. You know, children. They're, They're in, in water. water. All of them? They were shot uh, one in the water. One was actually last seen by a volcano. They were shot in the water, and then a building <laughs> fell on them. Okay, so you're saying Covering that... my base is here. Okay, what else happened? Did they also have a heart attack? No. Yes. No. Did they? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me that. Uh, you look, tell you me tell that me. And I'll tell you something psychic -y about it, you know? Cool. You give me information, and then I'll make shit up. How about that? Sounds good.
that wraps up this show, right, Scotty? Uh, yeah, that's it. I predict the show is over. You're right. Deep bad fight. Deep bad fight.